All right, so I'm gonna show how to open up and disassemble this MacBook Pro model A1502, early 2015. So first, what you wanna do is use a Pentolo uh, bit. It's a star-shaped, um, size 1.2, um, and then remove the 10 screws from the bottom. So there's four here, two here, and then four more. Once you do that, just go from the back and then pull up the cover. There's normally some clips here, um, but the battery's bulging out, so it kind of uh, already pushed those clips out. Um, and then you'll see inside. Um, after you do that, you'll want to disconnect the battery. Just open up this part and then get the very top lip of this and just pull it up just like that with your fingernails or a pry tool. Um, make sure not to pry this connector off the board. Okay. After you disconnect the battery, you'll want to open it up and then press and hold the power button just to drain any ex excess power. All right. All right. Once you do that, then you'll flip it over. Okay. And you'll see there's the SSD right here. It's held in place with a T5 a bit. Um, don't mix these screws up because they're all different size, even the back cover. Um, I should have mentioned that earlier. So hopefully you didn't mix it up. If you did, the two on the top near the back are smaller screws. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and start removing the screws. So here's the um, SSD. So after you remove the screw, you lift it up slightly at an angle and then you can just wiggle it out just like that, okay? After you do that, um, you can remove the wireless antennas. So you just go underneath the antennas and then just pull up from the tail and it'll pop out just like that, all right? To put them back, you just put them straight back on top and then push them down. Uh, make sure they're aligned properly before pushing down or you can damage the antenna or the connector, all right? Then you'll want to take this little rubber cap off here, all right? I like to use the screwdriver because there's two screws under, like the screws under here, and then get the screwdriver in between, and then just lift it up so that way it pulls up the adhesive with it. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. Okay, and then as you can see, um, these screws hold the hinges in place, so we're gonna have to transfer the screen over. So we'll take the whole screen out. So on this side, the screws are this way with the adhesive. So you get the same thing, screwdriver in between the two screws, and then just lift it up just like that to get the adhesive with it, okay? Um, to remove that, I believe it's a T8 screwdriver bit. So to get the hinges off, um, well, first what you'll want to do is actually undo this uh, little latch. So I like to use my fingernail under the corner of the latch, but you can lift up this black plastic piece and then just pull on it to lift it up just like this. Okay, and then use the two sides of the latch to wiggle it and pull it back. Okay, and this is how you remove the LCD connector, just like that. All right, once you do that, um, you'll want to remove, actually, there's these two little um, brackets that hold the screen. So stay with the T5 bit and then you can remove those. So once you remove the screw, you can pull this little silver thing out, okay? It's on both sides, so remove both of those. Okay, again, you don't wanna mix things up, so try and keep them all in order. All right, remove the other one. All right, just like that. All right, once you remove those two, then you can switch to the T8. Usually what I do is um, I'll open this up 90 degrees and then hang the screen off the edge of my desk. Uh, you probably won't be able to see this. Let me see if I might, let me adjust the camera and see if I can show you. Okay, just like that, I think you can see. Yeah, so once you do that, um, then undo the screws. So I like to loosen each one a little bit first before completely um, undoing the screws. So just like this. Okay. And then you can start undoing all the screws. And again, remember to keep them all in order because um, sometimes the screws will be a little bit different. These, the screws, um, all six are about the same, but I like to keep them in order anyways. Right. 
Once you got all the screws out, you can lift the screen up. All right, and it should just pop out. If it gets stuck, um, you might wanna open the screen a little bit more than 90 degrees. So if you do that, uh, make sure you have either put some pressure down on here or put one of the screws back. And then you can open the screen up a tiny bit more and then you can lift it out, okay? Same thing with this. So open it a tiny bit more than 90 degrees and that should be good enough to lift this screen out. Oh, and then I forgot to mention, you wanna remove this rubber piece. I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but it just has these little flaps that go up and go in. And then remove the, um, the camera connector here. So this also connects to the screen. So you'll want to remove this as well. Okay, so the adhesive, you wanna go as close to the adhesive as possible, don't just pull straight up. And I like to also pull to the side to kind of keep it from bending the, the cable. Okay, just like that. Once you get the cable out, go as close as you can to the connector and just wiggle it while you pull it and it should come out just like that. Okay, then you can set the screen aside. All right, now that we've got the screen out, you can flip it back over. All right, we'll go back to removing the rest of the screws. They use T5. Okay, so we'll start from here. Actually, is this, this is a Phillips. So this you'll have to use a PH0 or a J0, um, whichever one you have. So this is like a cross type screw. Okay, so you remove that. All right, once you remove that, you can go back to the T5 and then you can remove all these connectors. So the fan, you'll have a nut screw right here. All right, let's remove that. And there's another screw for the fan here. All right, then you can remove the two screws holding this bracket in place. Hopefully you can see all this. Once you remove those two screws, you can take the bracket out. All right, and then there's another screw here. Okay, so after you remove that, you can pry up this little um, connector, just like this. All right, and we'll keep going around. So there's another screw up here. Another screw for a fan here. All right, and then you got another board screw here. All right, to remove the fan, you just flip this little tab up. Once you flip that up, then you can push the connector out using this part of the cable. All right. Just like that. This fan is actually underneath the heatsink. So if you want, you can actually leave it in if you're not taking it out. But to take out the fan, you'd either have to take out the heatsink or lift the whole motherboard. Um, so usually what I like to do, um, since I'm going to keep the fan in, I'm actually going to leave the fan attached to the logic board. All right, then we'll remove this bracket. There's two screws. Okay, once you remove those two screws, you can remove the bracket. And then you can undo the connector here for the trackpad. Okay, just like this. Okay, just like that. And then you can remove this connector completely, just like that. Okay, and you can set it aside. So this one, if you are to reinstall it, just know that the bent side goes to the left, okay? So it connects to this side. All right, after you do that, you can continue removing all the connect, uh, the screws. So there's another one here. And another one up here. All right, and then there's one in this corner. 
charge port you can actually remove separately. There's just two screws holding it in place. There's one here, one here. Some noise going on outside. I wonder what that is. But just remove that like this. Okay. And then there's an adhesive so you can peel this up. And then the connector you can remove just by wiggling this and pulling it. Okay. All right. Then you got the speaker connector here. Um, to remove the speaker connector, you just go as close to the corner as you can and then pull on this cable. Okay. Be careful. You don't want to break it. Okay. And then after you pull that up, you can slide your nail or pry tool around the front and it'll come out just like that. Then you got the microphone cable here. So you can pull this adhesive thing back. And then flip the little switch here. Once you flip that, you can wiggle this and pull it. If it's stuck, um, sometimes I have to use like a needle or something to grab that. But let's see if I can pull it without it. Okay, so just wiggle it. Pull it. Okay. Oh, the little adhesive strip came off. So that makes it more difficult. So when the adhesive strip comes off, you're probably not going to be able to just yank it out. So I like to use a needle like this. And I'll just go underneath the cable and then use the needle to pull on the wire. Okay, just like this. Let's see if I can get through this. It's a little bit tough. I don't know why, but this cable always gets caught in that connector, in that slot. Might need to use a screwdriver to push the other end of the needle. Okay. And I think pull this. Huh, why is it stuck so tight this time? Usually it's not stuck this strongly. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it comes out just like that. Usually you won't have that tough of a time with it, but for some reason this one was stuck extra strong. Then you got the keyboard backlight cable connector just here, just pop it up. All right, and you got the keyboard connector here. Just peel this adhesive back, flip this latch, and then you can wiggle this cable out. Okay, just like that. All right, and then you got the connector for this speaker here. The speakers are just held in with three screws. When you remove those, you can just pop them out. Um, so I'm not really going to show that. And then same thing like the other one, just get underneath. There's an adhesive and then get to the edge and then kind of pull up the one corner just like this. Okay. And once you get that corner up, you can slide your fingernail or pry tool around and pop up the other end. Okay. Just like this. All right. And there's the adhesive holding it down. All right, so we'll just get that adhesive up. Just get it back on. Okay, and then once you got all those screws out and all the connectors, um, there's only this one other connector here. So you pinch it. It has some little kind of spring-loaded um, hooks here. So you have to squeeze this in while you pull it, and that'll remove this um, the HDMI port, USB, and SD card, wireless cardboard. All right, once you got that, I like to grab the, the thing here and then lift it up. Somebody's messing with the car. Let me go see what's going on. Looks like it was just a neighbor messing with their car. Okay, once you do that, you got the board out, basically um, lift it at an angle. The hardest part with this is putting it all back in because all these cables and connectors are sticking out where the board would go. So you kind of have to make sure you pull all these back while you push it back down, while you put it back down. Okay, um, that's pretty much how you remove the board for this. Um, there's not too much else. 
Um, we can remove this board. The wireless card, you remove the screw and there's a thermal pad. So when you pull it up slightly at an angle, it's going to be stuck to this board. Um, I'll show you that right now, actually. So remove this. It's also a T5 screw. All right. And then you can lift it up. Don't pull too hard because you don't want to like quickly like yank it out. Um, so once you get it up at an angle, you can just wiggle this out just like that. So you can see there's the thermal pad. I'm going to leave it there though. Okay. All right, we'll put this screw back. And then underneath here, there's a T8, um, T8 screw to hold this board in place. All right, and that's pretty much how you fully disassemble this MacBook Pro. Um, to remove this board, you'll have to remove the adhesive strip from this out, and you might even have to take this speaker out. Um, these speakers are pretty easy to remove. Some of the models, they have the speaker going underneath the board that are a lot more difficult. But this one, you just pull this speaker out. There's three screws. All right, don't mix them up. They're all different sizes. Actually, I'll pull out both speakers just so you can see. Okay. And then you can set it aside. Same thing with the other speaker. Hopefully you can see all this. Okay, just like that. And then same thing, pull up the speaker and then move it aside. So be careful with the cable because it goes underneath. Sometimes the speaker gets a little stuck. I don't know if debris gets underneath or something sticky, but yep, you just pull it out just like that. Um, the batteries, they're held in place with an adhesive. So to get them out, I, ha I think I did another video with it, but usually I have to use this tool and just scrape underneath to cut all the adhesive. Um, if you're going to throw this whole piece away, what you can do is put some isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol in here. And then when you pry it, it'll, it'll kind of peel it up easier, but you don't want to do it if you're going to reuse these parts because you might damage the trackpad or something or the keyboard. So underneath here, there's another, um, metal plate that you have to pry up that's stuck with adhesive if you need to change the trackpad separately, but I'm not going to show that in this video. Um, but Again, once you remove the speaker here, you can take this board out and you can see that's that board. Okay, that's pretty much it. So basically to reassemble it, you just do everything in reverse. Um, put back this board and then put back the speakers and then the, the logic board. Make sure you have all these connectors out, the um, backlight, the microphone, the battery, the keyboard, and then the trackpad cable. Make sure to hold them out of the way when you slot it back in. Um, but that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe because that will help me. And thanks for watching. Bye.